Good day guys, this particular clinic introduces the concept of centrifugal water chillers and the major components. Water chillers are used in a variety of air conditioning and process cooling applications. They are used to make cold water that can be transported throughout a facility using pumps and pipes. This cold water can be passed through the tubes of oils to cool the air in an air conditioning application, or it can provide cooling for a manufacturing or industrial process. Systems that employ water chillers are commonly called chilled water systems. Centrifugal water chillers can also be divided into two types based on the method used to reject heat to the atmosphere, water-cooled or air-cooled. Since most centrifugal chillers are water-cooled, they are the primary focus of this clinic. Water-cooled centrifugal chillers are generally available from 300 to 4,000 tons. The major components for centrifugal water chiller is the compressor. This particular centrifugal water chiller makes use of a shallow tube evaporator where refrigerant absorbs heat from the water flowing through the tubes. The compressor is made up of one or more centrifugal impellers. A second shell and tube heat exchanger serves as the water-cooled condenser, where refrigerant is condensed inside the shell and water flows inside tubes. Refrigerant is metered through the system using an expansion device such as a fixed orifice plate. An economizer can be used to enhance the efficiency of a chiller with multiple compressor impellers. A control panel is also provided on the chiller and a starter is either mounted on the chiller or located remotely. The centrifugal compressor uses the principle of dynamic compression, which involves converting energy from one form to another to increase the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant. It converts kinetic energy to static energy. The cork component of the centrifugal compressor is the rotating impeller. The center or eye of the impeller is fitted with blades that draw refrigerant vapor into radial passages that are internal to the impeller body. The rotation of the impeller causes the refrigerant vapor to accelerate within the impeller passages, increasing its velocity and kinetic energy. The accelerated refrigerant vapor leaves the impeller and enters the diffuser passages. These passages start out small and become larger as the refrigerant travels through them. As the size of the diffuser passages increases the velocity, and therefore the kinetic energy, of the refrigerant decreases. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy is not destroyed, only converted from one form to another. Thus, the refrigerant's kinetic energy is converted to static energy or static pressure. Thus, the refrigerant's kinetic energy is converted to static energy or static pressure. Refrigerant, now at a higher pressure, collects in a larger space around the perimeter of a compressor called the volute. The volute also becomes larger as the refrigerant travels through it. Again, as the size of the volute increases, the kinetic energy is converted to static pressure. Due to its pressure and temperature, the refrigerant leaving the compressor is in a condition that allows its heat to be rejected from the chiller. Again, in the passages of the rotating impeller, the refrigerant vapor accelerates, increasing its velocity and kinetic energy. As the area increases in the diffuser passages, the velocity, and therefore the kinetic energy, of the refrigerant decreases. This reduction in kinetic energy is offset by an increase in the refrigerant's static energy or static pressure. Finally, the high-pressure refrigerant collects in the volute around the perimeter of the compressor, where further energy conversion takes place. The resulting pressure and temperature of the refrigerant is now high enough that its heat can be rejected from the chiller. Centrifugal compressors use one or more impellers to compress the refrigerant. A multi-stage compressor uses two or three impellers to increase the pressure of the refrigerant in steps instead of performing the task within a single impeller. Compressed refrigerant vapor travels from the outlet of the first stage compressor impeller to the inlet of the second stage compressor impeller. After the accelerated refrigerant vapor leaves the last impeller, it collects in the compressor volute and travels on to the condenser. This slide will show the comparison of single stage compressor and multi stage compressor. As you can see on the right side, the multi stage compressor has wider range of loads and bigger operating envelope. 
which allows the chiller to unload from 100% to 10 to 25% without surging and without using hot gas bypass.